Hello, I am Nicholas Hancock with Midwest Lightning Rods. We are a lightning protection company based out of central Illinois. Um, we are a specialized trade through the electrical union, local 146, IBEW. Um, how it works here in central Illinois, if we want more than one um, lightning protection installer specialist um, on site, then we have to pull two journeyman electrician from the bench to work alongside with us. So this is going to be just kind of a, there might be a few videos or if not, you'll be able to scroll through and pick the section you want, but there's gonna be quite a bit of detail here about different areas of lightning protection. And uh, what it's aimed to do is to make it so when a journeyman electrician gets pulled off the bench to go work in a field that he's, has no experience in whatsoever, um, that possibly watching this video might help you be able to show up to the job site with a little better understanding of what's going on. I will mention a lot of things that are um, basics as far as the codes we follow, which is UL96A, NFPA 780, and LPI 175. Uh, first topic is going to be um, just basics. So there are several rules of thumb when it comes to lightning protection. Um, First of all, there is two different kinds of materials that are used um, when uh, we submit or when they spec a uh, lightning protection system. Um, there is aluminum and there's copper, uh, which uh, copper is copper and bronze, both interchanged uh, and depending on the part of the component that's, that was made. Um, and there's also stainless steel uh, bolts and nuts in both uh, different uh, types of equipment. And the stainless is compatible with either. Uh, there are some lightning protection manu equipment manufacturers who actually just use stainless fittings as bimetal connectors. And a bimetal connector is a code compliant way to uh, connect aluminum conductor cable to copper cable. So um, the reason there are two is because um, aluminum and copper, neither one, are compatible with every type of mounting surface. Uh, for instance, um, a lot of people look at copper as being the better uh, metal for it because it's said to be a better conductor. However, as far as UL is concerned, they are equally effective metals in the installation of lightning protection. Um, the only difference is, is we cannot go and connect to ground or go underground um, using aluminum components. Therefore, on an exposed system, which would be um, where there's cables going from the rooftop down to uh, below grade um, prior to entering the soil, uh, we would convert to copper if it was aluminum running down or aluminum rooftop system um, which if it's exposed we are putting a 72 inch uh, schedule 40 or schedule 80 depending on the spec uh, PV sleeve non-conductive sleeve um, over it for the bottom six foot so what we would do is convert to copper just before we put the PVC sleeve on it for protection because um, like I said we can't run the aluminum underground and then convert it has to be converted above grade so there are a few types of ways we get to ground um, most of which if it's new construction um, is called a concealed down lead system which would be schedule 40 PVC uh, one inch that's installed by an electrical contractor at areas designated um, by the lightning protection system designer. And so basically when it comes time to install on our part, we get to a structure and sticking out of the roof is one inch PVC stems. And um, we would fish copper down through it. And at the bottom, we'll drive ground rods on the top side put a cap fitting 
and if this rooftop system is copper then there will be a copper fitting on top of our one inch pvc cap uh, and if it's aluminum then that will be considered the bimetal right there so part of the rules with the different types of metals other than um, obviously just not being able to bury aluminum is a lot of a lot of the uh, structures that we deal with have metal coping metal roof caps uh, and although a lot of them are said to be steel or painted steel if it bends and if they cut it and if it doesn't rust then it has galvalume in it um, which is popular just makes the metal more pliable to be able to do what they want with it um, so what that means and what, where we're concerned is if the job is a, a system that has been called for a copper lightning protection system and we get on site and there is a metal roof cap everywhere where we are installing our lightning protection components then we pump the brakes and revisit because we cannot install copper components on aluminum or anything with galvalume in it which is a whole lot actually uh, however if we happen to be mounting to the actual roof membrane or to stone or brick or block or, or copper um, then we can use copper but standing seam roofs um, metal roof caps and the rooftop units are 50 50 some of them actually are steel and a lot of them have galvalume in them. so we just have to study better to see uh, what we're dealing with there um, to see what uh, type of material is allowed typically this is all taken care of long before the installation actually starts however as much as we encourage our installers to follow the uh, plan, the design plan that is provided on each job, um, we also know anybody that's familiar with the uh, construction industry, things change every day. So there's always a ladder or a roof hatch or a vent or a drain or something that we didn't know about. And it not being on the drawing does not mean we disregard it. We have to do everything according to code. Um, so, um, I'm going to go with a layout of a lightning protection system. How it works is if it is a, a ridge, a, a ridge, ridged roof, um, like a house or a lot of churches, or well, there's just a lot of buildings in general. With the gable roofs uh, have to remain within 24 inches from the outside of the structure so if it's on a, a building ridge or a, a roof ridge then within 24 inches from the edge we usually go between 12 and 18 we'll be our first air terminal unit they are spaced along the ridge or the high point for every 20 feet or less and in between the air terminal unit bases or the lightning rod bases and the bases are what actually attaches to the roof or the unit or whatever we're attaching to um, and that's also what the cable connects to the lightning rod or the air terminal itself it just is threaded rod that screws on um, to act as a new high point which brings me to a good point our whole job is to create a new high point of a structure. So when we get on a rooftop, we are going around the perimeter of a flat roof. We're staying within 24 inches of the outside edge. And usually that's only a concern on corners. Um, but yeah, outside corners get an air terminal and every 20 foot around the perimeter get an air terminal. In between those air terminals and air terminal bases that are getting glued, every three foot, there must be, the cable has to be fastened. If we are doing an adhesive mount system, which about 90% of our systems are, then we will be adhering our air terminal bases and every three foot, we will be adhering cable fasteners. 
Um, we call that laying the dots. That's because, as you can imagine, um, after we get done gluing uh, a rooftop, it's just a matter of coming back with the cable and, you know, connect the dots because we've already pre pre determine the routing and the cable fasteners are in place so uh, installing lightning protection is something where unfortunately a lot of the times the people that come and uh, the building owners or building owner representatives and even electrical engineers that uh, inspect the lightning protection systems they're not inspecting the quality of the actual system they are inspecting what it looks like that being said, it has to be done in an orderly fashion. When you unroll a spool of cable, if you grab it every 12 inches or 18 inches, it's gonna have a kink every 12 inches. So you have to figure out how to get it, roll with it, let it lay. Um, and when it comes to bend radius, when we get to a corner or you get to where we're going over the edge of the roof or whether it's going penthouse down to main roof um, or whether we're going off an air condenser unit down to the roof we must maintain a nine inch or greater bend radius so as much as it would seem like it looks good if we just make that bend nice and tight to grab the contour of whatever we're going over that will fail our inspection by UL all day. So, um, yes, that means it, that has to be considered. Um, for instance, on a vertical, on an, air, on an air handling unit on the roof, if it's six foot tall, and let's say there's four air terminals on it, well, we put a, a perimeter around it um, with cable fasteners. Well, when we come off of the unit, keep in mind, you have to come down a couple feet before your first cable fastener will be there because we actually have to loop over the edge. We cannot bend no matter what. Um, that goes in the same for any cables coming over to our main runs. Um, always leave a little extra to make it loop we use parallel connectors more than we use T fasteners just for um, the ease of installation and the simplicity. Um, because with a T, if you cut that cable half inch short, then you have to go and splice in some cables. So, um, like I said, just for simplicity, it's just how we do it. And everything is, is to code how, either way you skin the cat. Um, yeah, so we are creating a new high point, which that means after we get our perimeter done, we look around the rooftop, whether it's on our drawing or it's not. Um, and our drawing, I'm talking about the light protection system design that's been uh, usually submitted and approved and returned. So now you have it in your hands. Um, and we look around and we want to be the new high point. So when we are adhering our components to uh, rooftop like air handling units um, the rule of thumb there is if it requires more than one air terminal unit then it requires more than one path to ground so that being said if there is a mushroom unit that only is 18 inches by 18 inches um, and it's a, a yeah mushroom hood we can put one air terminal in the middle of it and run one line off of it over to our main conductor if it is within 16 feet. If it is over 24 inches uh, uh, of size of the unit, 24 inches by 24 inches, and that is uh, size of the top, and, or it is over 16 feet away, then it will require more than one air terminal unit and more than one path to ground. And when we refer to path to ground, that is just us coming from the rooftop unit to the main conductor. Um, in this case, in most cases, uh, we will essentially 
where a unit will require more than one path to ground, we'll be making a U over from the perimeter lightning protection com uh, conductor. We'll just come out to the unit, make a U and go back and come off that unit two times and connect to it right there at the base. But keep in mind, all of these routings have to be predetermined when the adhering of the cable fasteners takes place. Um, so we have to keep the size and all that in mind. And r the rooftop units, if they are over 24 inches, um, that means they will require more air terminal units. If it's over 20 feet long, then there will have to, it's treated just like a separate roof. Um, most air handlers uh, can get by with one on each corner. Um, however, there's also some big condenser units that require a lot more. Um, and that goes the same with solar panels. If there is area for us to mount to a track that the solar panels are on, then we will do that. Um, if the construction of the panels is not um, adequate for us to run or screw into anything, um, then we will build a perimeter around it using air terminal units with tripods on them that stick up 10 inches above the top of the solar panel height. So 10 inches is our magic number. There is no, we don't use 10 inch air terminal units. We use 12 or 18 inch. So maintaining 10 inches above shouldn't be a problem. But um, that's it. If there is a, any metal body whatsoever that is within six feet on the roof level, that is within six feet of our main conductor, then we will bond to the base of it and connect it to the uh, perimeter main conductor to prevent side flash. Um, if it is non-conductive and it is not taller than our air terminal units that are on site or it's not a, a new high point, and it's non-conductive, then we don't bond to it at all, or we don't even worry about it. If, but that does mean if there is a few soil pipes or drains or anything, a safety rail that is coming near within, five, within six feet of our main conductor, we have to bond to it. There's numerous different ways to do to it, bonding plates, bonding straps, depends on what we're bonding to but it has to be connected. Um, and that goes the same with um, when we're, when we are bonding to, uh, or when we are protecting around solar panels, if we're not connecting to them, but there is a track on the ground, we still have to consider that every hundred feet, it has to be connected to our system. So on the rooftop, we got every 20 feet around the perimeter, we got air terminal units. Every 100 feet around the perimeter, we drop to ground. So approximately every 100 feet, we will either be going to ground or you'll be seeing a piece of PVC stubbed up or we will be installing the PVC, um, depending on what stage of the game. <clears throat> Fall protection is mandatory, just like any you're in a bucket lift if you're within six foot of the roof edge it will be your responsibility we provide all tools all fall protection equipment we provide everything other than your hard hat your safety glasses your boots and your high vis uh, but yeah we are you are expected to have a harness on there's yo-yos to take up and uh, just stay safe. I do get it that we're moving a lot, so it's not the most convenient, but you got to do what you got to do to stay safe and not get in trouble. This field doesn't require a whole bunch of tools. Um, of course, whenever we're driving grounds, there's a pretty substantial size ground rod driver, but other than that, it's a couple ratchet wrench, a rack, ratchet winch, it's 916s on one end, half inch on the other end, pair of channel grips, cable cutters. Uh, some tin snips, nut driver, and um, yeah, impact driver. That's pretty much what we use. Um, the a hammer always comes in handy, 
But what we try to do is use adhesive mount everything. We don't want to be responsible for any roof penetrations because we don't want to be at any roof leak meetings that happen afterwards. Um, but yeah, well, thanks for joining the team and thanks for uh, checking out this video. There'll probably be another one or two for you to look at uh, if you are going to come to the field. But this was just kind of an overall, um, in general, of what we do. Uh, hopefully the illustrations I've thrown up along with this could be helpful also. But uh, uh, yeah, Midwest Lightning Rods, Lightning Strikes, we protect. Um, and feel free to visit our website, www.lightningstrikes-weprotect.com. Give us a call, 217-872-4676. And uh, if you have any lightning protection needs whatsoever, or if you need a little bit more insight, or if you are coming to work, then uh, I look forward to it. I'm signing off here. God bless.